Good morning everyone. So your starter for today is on just there. So if you'd like to pause it, write them down, have a go and I'll get back to you and continue it when you're ready. Great. Before we go on, I'd just like to uh, give a little bit of respect to um, to Theo. I was most impressed by his uh, Discord handle of uh, an absolute unit. Um, clearly got a, a bent for comedy because my favourite new comedian looks a little bit like Theo. That'd be James Acaster. So if you've got Netflix, have a little look. He's definitely very funny, but uh, do your maths first. So for the first one here, to the power of a half means square root, doesn't it? So the square root of 64 we're going to need to do. And then also when we're dealing with powers, you multiply out of a bracket, don't you? So I'm going to write 10 times a half there just to show my thinking square root of 64 is 8 half of 10 is 5 so that's 8x to the power of 5 moving on to the second one everything is being divided by x to the power of 5 at this point i would split it into two fractions and do each one separately when you divide x cubed by x to the power of 5, that's going to knock all of those out there and leave you with 2 underneath. Here, we're going to knock all of those out and leave you with 3 underneath. You can either leave it as a fraction, 5 over x squared, or I'd like you to think about using the negative powers, just because when we get into the differentiation in a minute, that's going to make life a bit easier. So 5 over x squared, the same thing as 5x to the negative 2. And moving in between those two forms is going to be crucial. Coming on to the third one, uh, the cube root of 1, 2, 5, which is going to be 5. And then we're going to have x to the 12 times a third. So that'll be 12 times a third. And a third of 12 is 12 divided by 3 is 4. So cube root of 125 is 5 x to the power 12 divided by 3 is 4 so those should be your answers there today we're going to be differentiating x to the power n you're going to see it in two forms when it's given in the form y equals and then whatever your quadratic or your cubic or whatever it is y equals x to the power n we are going to use dy over dx and that means the differential of um, y over x. So that's one way of writing it. The other form is when you're given the function of x. Then we use f dash of x. Okay. Right, now if you remember yesterday we were looking at this function which equals x cubed and we found that the um, derivative by um, first principles was 3x squared um, which we would write as this 3x squared and what we're going to be looking at is the fact that we could have just got that by saying the power we multiply by at the front and then the power drops by one there so we've got one little rule that we're going to be following so you'd like to if you could write this down as well so if the function of x is x to the power n then the derivative f dash x is going to be n times x to the power of we take one of that. Now we're going to do a load of those today but the situations will gradually get a little bit more complicated as we go. So I'm going to do 10 examples with you and then give you a load to practice because the best way to get good at this is just to knock a whole load of them out. This is one form that we'll see it in then, the f dash. So find the derivative function dash of x when function of x equals first up we're just going to have x to the power of 6 so our rule is we multiply by the power so hang on sorry I should write f dash x it's 
going to equal. We multiply by the power. We drop the power by 1. That's all we have to do on that one. For the second one, therefore, we multiply by the power, so we put a half in front of it. Take 1 away from a half, and I get negative a half. Now that's not the simplest way we could be thinking about that. So we've got 1 over 2. If I want a positive power, then that would need to be underneath. So that would be x to the power of half. And remember, power of a half is a square root. So we could write that as 1 over 2 root x. On to the next. I multiply by the power, minus 2. I drop the power by 1, goes down to minus 3. I can leave it like that, or if I want to have it in a positive power of x, I could say it's minus 2 over x to the power 3. And that's seen as simpler form, but using this and getting comfortable with it is key. On to the fourth one, x squared times x to the power 3. Well, first thing we need to do is simplify that. So we've got x to the power 5. Then we will have the derivative being multiplied by 5. Drop the power by 1, 5x to the power 4. The final one we've got here, that means x times x to the power minus 5, doesn't it? Which is the same thing as saying x to the power negative 4. Oh, negative 4, because there's a power 1 there. 1 take 5. So our derivative this time is going to be multiplied by the negative 4 drop the power by 1, so we could just call it that, or we could say that is equal to minus 4 over x to the power 5. Okay. And the other form you can have is where it says find dy over dx when y equals. So y is equaling to 7x cubed. So dy over dx is going to be, we multiply by the power, so 7 times 3 is 21, and we drop the power by 1, so it gives us 21x squared. For the next one here, dy over dx will be, we multiply negative 4 by a half, well a half of 4 is 2, so that'll be minus 2, and the power we take 1 away from a half and we again get minus a half. So we can say that that is going to be minus 2 over x to the power of half. Or we can say it's negative 2 over the square root of x. On to the third. 3x to the power of minus 2. So we've got dy over dx is going to be equal to negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Drop the power by 1 to minus 3. We've done it, but just to neaten it up in terms of a fraction, minus 6 over x cubed. So two more to do here. So dy over dx. It's a little tricky. Let's sort out what this is saying, first of all. In fact, I am going to sort that out. I'm going to say that y equals 8x to the power 7 divided by 3x. And that's going to be 8 thirds x to the power 6. So when we move on from there, we're going to then say, right, dy over dx is going to be, let me multiply by 8 
times 6 over 3, drop the power by 1, then have a look and see what we can do to sort this out. Well, I can divide 6 by 3 to get 2, so that's going to give me 8 times 2 is 16, x to the power 5. You may want to just rewind and watch that bit again. And the last one, we shall say dy over dx. We know the square root of 36. In fact, I'm starting again, aren't I, before? You really want to get all of this sorted out as something that's as simple as possible so that you can put the rules on it before we start differentiating. So I'm going to cross that out again and say, right, y is equal to root 36 x cubed. And then I'm going to say, I know the square root of 36 is 6. And the square root of x to the power 3 will be the roots bring in the fraction element, don't they? It will be x to the 3 over 2. Now, when I differentiate that, I'm going to do 6 times 3 over 2 x and then I'm going to take 1 away from 3 over 2 which leaves me with 1 half. Then have a look and see if we can sort this out. 6 times 3 over 2 well 2 goes into 6 3 times so we get 3 times 3 is 9 x to the power half which you can also write as 9 times the square root of x. Right, so once you've got that sorted out in your head, the thing to do is just do a whole load of this and start off with it nice and easy. Keep it easy. Keep yourself feeling good about it. So what we are going to do, page 263, exercise 12C. And today I want you to do every question. Now there are only four questions there in a way, but question one uh, goes up from A to R. So that is what uh, 18 of those there. Question two, similarly, um, quite a few. Question three and question four start to make you think a bit more about it. But you need to do question one and two first so that you're really flying on it um, and it becomes a second nature thing to do. OK, well, good luck with all of that. And once again, don't hesitate to email me with any problems at all. Okay, bye-bye.